Today, I put up a poll on my Instagram uh, referring to a sale I made last night. It was two Airwick air fresher refills that smelled like baby shampoo, baby bubble bath shampoo, maybe just bubble bath shampoo. It's what I used when I was a baby, I think. And I, I bought it for $5. It was a two pack. And I sold it for about 60 bucks when everything's said and done. It was uh, 50 bucks with 9.95 shipping. It's gonna go UPS ground to somebody just a little bit away. So I'll probably make like a dollar on shipping as well. Not bad. Uh, and the reason I'm bringing it up is because I took a best offer on it. I initially had it listed at 100 bucks for two cans of air pure air fresher, good smelling stuff. Uh, I lowered it to 88 because I like, you know, that, that same number thing going on. All having shipping additional. Uh, and then I opened up offers. The market had these priced at about 25 to 35 bucks a piece. And I took a best offer of 50 bucks. So half of my initial listing price, list price. And the poll I put up was, would you do this? Would you uh, risk losing a sale to counter with like 65? Because I see a lot of people who resell stuff on eBay or wherever uh, failing or not doing as good as they can at it. Uh, and a lot of it comes down to this. And so we're going to talk about why so many resellers are failing at what they do. Or if not failing, not achieving their uh, utmost potential or a reasonable fraction of that. I want to talk about this because a lot of you are in the reselling world. You make money as a hobby on the side, whatever. Personally, most of my income comes from things I sell on Amazon or eBay. Uh, at this point, it's probably two thirds of it, I'd say, maybe a little bit less. Uh, YouTube is kind of dropping off for me, but through the years, eBay and Amazon have always been the, the top, top end of that. Uh, and so I want to share with you some of the things that I've learned and hopefully that will help you make better decisions when it comes to selling things. And I know that seems kind of simple and almost like silly. Like, of course, I know how to sell things. It's what I do. But so many people, they get hung up on these three, they have three misconceptions. So we're going to go over those misconceptions. And some of those are just, you're thinking about it the wrong way. And some of those, you're not, you don't have the right perspective on it. So it's not like, it's not, this is not going to be the kind of video that you're going to see someone else make because it just, it's my personal opinions. Uh, and the first thing is, and I, this is going off of the comments I got directly from other people in relation to this poll. It was like probably 50, 50, uh, people who would hold out for more 15 bucks more, uh, or those who would take it. So this is for everyone who would say, I'd hold out for more, or I'd counter with 65 or 75 or whatever. You know, oftentimes we get we get tricked into this idea that, oh, we're gonna split it halfway and that's fair. When that's really not, well, we'll get into that. The first thing is kind of dovetails with what I just said, is too many people out there, you, you guys, uh, myself too sometimes, we get this emotional attachment to the items we're selling. That's probably because we like the stuff we're buying. I mean, I get it. I'm not saying it's like, you you know, it's if you do this, you're dumb. Like, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that uh, you want to remove any kind of emotional attachment that like hoarding sense you might have. And I'm not perfect. Obviously, I have an issue with buying more inventory than I can list. But what I don't have an issue with is saying goodbye to the stuff when I get an offer on it. I, you know, you're in the business of selling things, not holding inventory. And it's easy to really forget that. So if you are someone out there and your sales are not as high as you want them to be, as you think they should be, uh, and you're, you have best offers turned on, don't say no to anything. I mean, think of it this way. You've already bought the item. Maybe you were wrong in how much it was worth. Would you rather uh, have that, that amount of pride? Would you rather be, be prideful in your failure? Or would you rather sell it as fast as you can, you know, learn from this uh, and move forward? The second thing people I don't think really understand is that your money works for you. You make money off your money. Uh, and there's degrees of that, but in resale, it's the same. Think, this is what someone messaged me and they really were, I think it's a good analogy. 
Think of every dollar as a worker. So if I spent 10 workers to buy these two air refreshers and I sold it for 60 workers, I can then use those 60 workers to multiply the amount of workers I have in two weeks. Uh, I think it took about two weeks yet for this to sell. Whereas if I were to hold off for those extra 15 workers, as opposed to taking 40 today, uh, I'm probably not going to make those that money tomorrow. It's probably, if I don't take this offer, there's like three sales occur every 90 days. So I'm probably, if I'm holding out for the higher end of the market, I'm probably not gonna sell it for like six months. Is that extra $15, is that worth six months of not having 40 bucks? I don't think so. Especially because in our line of work, in this hobby or this side hustle, whatever you call reselling on eBay or Mercari or Etsy or wherever, you use your money to make more money. So with that 40 bucks I'm making, you know, and I'm just generalizing because there's fees and everything. So let's say 60 bucks after shipping, after fees is still going to be like $31 profit after like the cost of goods on the low end. That $31, how long will it take me to make $15 off that $31 a day? You know, if, if less than that, a half of a day, if I, if I buy the right things. So begin thinking of it like that. Don't get married to your price. Don't fall in love with the things you buy. Understand like, yes, there is a thrill to this and the hunt is fun. But at the end of the day, we sell things. We make money uh, by selling more things, not by holding off and watching our inventory grow in monetary value, like hypothetically. I know a lot of people might disagree with me. And if you do, please, in the comments, tell me why I'm wrong. I would love to hear your perspective. But for the majority of you out there, this is advice you need to hear. And finally, the third reason that I'm I'm always going to be taking offers that are reasonable. You know, my strategy is I price things at the top of the market, sometimes like 15 to maybe even like 40% above the top of the market because I want to take any offer I get. If a buyer out there has any, any inkling they might want this product enough to put an offer out there, I'm taking it. Uh, and maybe I will make a, a little bit less than you know I could have potentially, but freeing up that money, and more importantly for me, freeing up that space, not worrying about it, being able to move on to the next project, that allows your business to grow, it allows your money to grow, uh, you have less things cluttering your mind. That's where I'm at right now. I don't have a problem selling things, I'm getting better at listing you know, 25, 35 more sometimes things a day. But my warehouse here, and this is why I have a warehouse, I could not live like this. Uh, maybe I'll show you guys sometime. It's too messy. It's too messy, things are stacked up. The entire back of the warehouse is semi-organized. The entire front is just chaos. And really, I should stop buying things, but it's just too much fun. Uh, and the cash flow is there, especially when I'm buying things I can sell for like 10 or 15 times more than I paid for it. It's very easy to justify, even though I know, you know, at the end of the day, it isn't good space wise, spending 90 bucks. If I can sell four of those items in a week and make 200 bucks back and spend an hour and a half doing that, it's kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, and I think that's something I have to work on. And if you're not there, if you're not at a point where you're selling things, you're just buying too much, sell more things. Uh, take offers, lower your prices, do not become obsessed with getting the best deal. You're not in a competition against the buyer. You're trying to form a mutually beneficial agreement with the buyer. Think of it that way. Think of a not buyers not as your adversary, but as someone who you're going to help get a thing they want, and they're going to help you get a thing you want, which is money. Little, uh, little dialogue here. Want to start it? Want to hear what you have to say? Uh, please, if you are new, subscribe. If you're not new, comment below with what you think on this. Appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you later.